Hello again and welcome again. Um, I'm back to narrate this um, nine minute tape or this nine minute video segment for you on a uh, System 99 high angle rescue from a radio tower. Um, this mock rescue involves a man who was um, incapacitated while working up on this tower and um, was rendered unconscious in some way. Now his fall protection gear has stopped any um, long descent you know to the ground. In other words his fall protection gear, his harness, his belt stopped him from um, going more than say a couple of feet whereas tie-off was. So right now we have a two-man crew setting up the System 99. There's Matt Miles again. Um, trick here is um, you have to lift the person before you can lower them. As you can see here, they're lifting him now. They've got the System 99 set up a few feet above him. And you need mechanical advantage. We're using a B system again. Um, so once they lift him and uh, they disconnect his fall protection hook, which they just did, now they can lower him. Um, would be virtually impossible, unless you're uh, almost a superman, to climb up and lift somebody by hand, you know, because it's dead weight, which doesn't mean he's dead, it just means that it's someone else's weight. Uh, now they're going to lower him down to the first aid crew on the ground. Uh, but anyway, as I started to say, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to lift a person and while you're holding on to a tower with one arm so you don't fall yourself. Uh, you can see the uh, load side ropes there coming down as he's lowering the victim. Uh, Matt, and we're going to run through it again here, Matt, the uh, set backup guy there on the uh, first rescue, he went down the tower with the victim so that he wouldn't, the victim wouldn't get hung up in the tower. So he sort of held him off. So uh, this fella climbed up above the victim. Now he's setting a cable to attach the System 99 to. Now he's got it attached. Now he's going to attach the load side carabiner that comes off the bottom traveler pulley to the victim's D-ring and the upper back of his straps. And then he will lift him, as you'll see here. And then you will see slack right next to the System 99, just to the right of it. He's being suspended by that brown half-inch rope with an eye on each end. All right, now they're going to lift him, and as I said, you'll see the slack develop. Uh, but anyway, um, you need this, as I said, you need this mechanical advantage to lift someone. Okay, now there's the slack in the fall protection tie-off that stopped his initial fall. And we get that uh, line out of the way, and they'll be they'll be lowering him here in a second. And I believe we're going to zoom in on the head to show you how the brake works. Yeah, see the notice the drum is stationary; it's not turning. So the rope sliding around the stationary drum gives us the 90% brake. So I believe we have about a 180-pound payload here, or victim. So the fellow up on the tower who's doing the lowering only has to uh, deal with 18 pounds of rope sliding through his hand. I mean, it's hardly a distinguishable amount of weight that you're feeling. Um, when they went to lift him, and we're going to go through it again here, gives me a chance to point out all the characteristics of this. Um, set up three to one as the system is when they are lifting him here so that they get some slack in the uh, fall protection line. 
Um, assuming he weighs 180, which I think he did, it only takes about 60 pounds of effort pulling down on the free side rope to get the victim to come up. Again, what you would do in this is you would, you know, suspend the System 99 from the rescue technician's belt. He would climb six, eight, ten feet above the um, victim. That way he's got enough room to anchor the system's head assembly, suspend it from a cable or from a carabiner, uh, pay out the ropes, which he has done, as you can see here, attach the traveler pulley carabiner, that's what he's doing now, to the victim's harness, and then he will lift him, which he's doing now. You can see the ropes moving there. He's going to lift him a couple of feet. I think we will pan down, yeah. Now you can see he's disconnecting the um, fall protection lanyard that stopped him from, um, uh, you know, crashing down to the ground initially. And now we're going to lower him. As I said, there would be a man below him climbing down the tower as he's being lowered uh, to keep him from getting tangled in the tower. Uh, you only have about six minutes to uh, do one of these rescues. Um, this is something called uh, suspension trauma can come into effect. You get, can get blood pooling in the abdomen, especially if it's a, a uh, worker that is uh, unconscious. And that can uh, threaten his life. That's suspension trauma. We do have a paper on that uh, on the website that you can open and read. It's a PDF document. Uh, here's one more view uh, from below. Uh, the climber, uh, rescue climber here is uh, paying out enough rope so he can attach it to the harness again. Um, so as I said, uh, you've only got about five minutes, maybe six. Uh, many experts uh, agree that that's uh, uh, the amount of time to take. The amount of time it takes before uh, you can get you can get damage or even death. Um, and I believe in this um, lowering exercise. You'll be able to see the man that's uh, guiding him from the tower. Now we're going to pan down here to the uh, fellow on the ground who uh, is going to do the lifting. And he puts the handle on. And he slides the handle up. Using his weight and his strength, he pulls down. Now the idea is he needs to lift this fellow who is suspended about two, three feet which will give the fellow up top enough room to disconnect the fall protection strap, which I believe he has now done. And you can see the fellow underneath who is going to guide the uh, victim here down the tower. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, I'm about out of tape and about out of uh, things to discuss. I will say thank you and goodbye.